years. Yeah. All these artists, all these clients, meeting a lot of producers, meeting a lot of engineers. Um, and I just thought, you know what? It'd be really cool to hear from these people and like get their stories and find find out how they got into what they're doing and uh -huh. why did you choose hip hop music? Like, uh -huh. was there an album or a song or a, someone that first like got you inspired to want to start it or was it a friend that introduced it to you? So it was it was wanting to know more about the people I was working with and then yeah. also combining like my passion for audio and recording and knowing how to use mics and and then also like being a big fan of podcasts myself like i right. listen to a ton of podcasts on my own time like oh yeah, what, are, what or, are some of your favorite podcasts right now because i i listen to podcasts too but i got a feeling you probably are on some shit that i haven't checked out <laughs> um i don't think so probably nothing crazy like joe rogan is probably my number one that I oh listen yeah to. okay okay um yeah. Big part of that is because he's um, he's you know very involved in UFC, so he has a lot of um, oh. fighters on the show, and he you know has a lot of he's he's a black belt in a bunch of martial yeah, arts, so he, yeah. he he has a really unique angle on that. Yeah. Okay, what you um, said just got me psyched because yeah. I know you watched UFC last weekend on Saturday, right? Yeah. Because I was yeah. watching the shit out of that. I oh, should, yeah. <laughs> I should have hit you up, man, because I forgot that you're so into it. Yeah. The TikTok came with me. He hates that shit. But oh, he had, like, yeah. He had nothing to do. He was like, yeah, I was like, dude, me. I don't know what I'm doing tonight. Like, yeah. If you want to hang yeah. out with me, you're watching the fucking yeah. fights. Yeah. And uh, I went with my friend Julian, who I know from Victoria. And um, I mean, that was an amazing card. That was it an was amazing. So night. good. It was stacked and it lived up to the hype. Like when you get when they when they create big matchups like that, yeah. you hope that they're not stinkers, you know? Yeah. But I mean it was like knockouts and <laughs> then that five second knockout cool. and like the new world record for the quickest I mean it was all in all really good. And then the John Jones fight too was yeah. entertaining. Like he didn't it wasn't one sided at all. Like he got tested, you know. He did, and I uh, didn't expect Santos to play that smart. I don't think that he's not smart, but like he usually goes a lot more aggressive, at least mm -hmm. in the clips that I'd seen. I thought it was, yeah, really tactical. And I had, I had my money on Masvidal hard that night too. Like, I mean, yeah. I love him so much. Yeah, me too. And like watching all of the uh, back and forth between him and Ben, I was so invested in that match yeah. Yeah. that when he got up and just dropped him like that, I fucking, <laughs> I almost cried. I was so hyped. And I've been watching the replays for like days ever since. And, uh, you know, the fallout and uh, them talking about what happened. And yeah, it's it's been a major theme of my week. <laughs> no, it was great because there was a lot of, there was a lot of smack talk before that. And, um, you know, he, even Rogan had Masvidal on his show and he talked about how much he hates Ben. And so there was like this <laughs> <Yeah>. big WWE <laughs> buildup. Right. And then, yeah. Real um, entertainment. <laughs> it was funny. I was, I had people over and, um, we had like a barbecue in the backyard and I brought my TV out, uh, cause I get pretty good Wi-Fi out in the yard. So I, mm. I brought my TV out and we just pay-per-viewed it. And oh, I went nice. inside, like the fight just started, the Mosfet all Askren fight. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'm going to run inside, grab some drinks. Uh -uh. <laughs> and then, like, I just barely got to the staircase and everyone's like, fuck shit. Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, uh. And I almost like fucking fell on the stairs. I'm like, what? What happened? It's over. <laughs> like, oh, oh my God. Oh <laughs> my gosh. It was like those Mike Tyson fights that people talk about back in the day, you know, where people go up to get popcorn and the fight's over before the end of round one. Like, <laughs> right. You didn't get a chance to get drunk yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, oh man. Yeah. All in all, just super entertaining night. Yeah. So, so you, okay. So you're in, you like check out Joe Rogan's podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah. What other kind of shit do you check out podcast wise? I mean, um, there's one that I really like called the infinite monkey cage. And wow. that's, um, it's like a science podcast. Um, wow. Okay. I've not heard of that. Which is done by BBC British Broadcasting, BBC four, I think. Okay. Um, they're not super consistent, which is one of the things that I, you know, um, is a little annoying. Cause I'm always like, Oh, when, when are you guys coming out? Everyone else puts out an episode or two a week. Why can't you guys like BBC is like mm. a huge fucking company yeah. in England with millions of dollars. Like, yeah. produce the show put some put some shows out anyhow yeah. isn't that what british like media usually does or uh i'm just assuming here but like uh like for example black mirror they'll put out like three or four episodes in a whole season 
right? Or like Sherlock, the TV series. That's true. They have a different format than North America. Yeah. Yeah. They're just like, but I mean, it's funny. Like they do that with radio too. I'm Mm -hmm. I'm assuming now, like I haven't really verified this, but it seems like they're all about like quality, fuck quantity. And like, I I guess there's a different mentality over there. I mean, I wonder if they could produce consistent quality if they just ramped up the, uh, production speed of it i don't know <laughs> no you're right now that now that i think about it like uh top gear you know the car show and then uh, it's like that too. which became uh you know a, um grand tour it used to be like that they and they don't call them seasons they're called series and they oh. do like a few they they're broken up into like quarters per year so yeah it's a whole different thing but no yeah so that might be uh. what that might be what they're doing uh, just What's, just being British. Just being British. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you guys. Fuck we'll make an episode we fucking feel like it. <laughs> but um that one's really fun because um the main one of the main hosts is Brian Cox and he he's like a fucking genius. He he works at the Large Hadron Collider in Geneva, you know, where they smash atoms together. Oh hell and, yeah. Wow. Um so it's him and then like a stand up comic. Wow. And then they're the two hosts and they have a panel of guests on each week. So it's like a six person thing. And when there's a, each episode has like a topic, like, Uh you know, the teenage brain or are we evolving yet? Are are humans still evolving or like, you know, how big is the universe? All these different topics. Right. And then they'll get like guests that specialize in that topic, but then they'll throw in like another stand up comic as one of the guests. So it's just this like crazy mashup of comedy and like, people interrupting each other and jokes, but then you're also getting a little bit of, you know, nerd science in there and it's just really fun. So Wow. Okay. So I they like talk about like hard science topics. Oh with, yeah. With pros and then also with comics who are just witty. <laughs> exactly. Just like taking the piss, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. sounds like a crazy yeah. mix. Yeah. I never it's I never listened mix. to anything like that. Um yeah, man. Uh what about you? Podcast wise, um I got into this podcast for a while called Snap Judgment. Have you heard of that one? I don't think so. It's a it's a storytelling podcast, and mm. what they do is they just uh, they take submissions, I guess, from from people. Or I'm not sure how they get these uh, stories because like, a lot of people are submitting and trying to get on the show. But anyways, um, they'll have a person in, they tell their story, uh, they you know edit it into a great like producible, I mean, sort of presentable product, like a 40 minute episode, and you just get these amazing stories from people who've done all kinds of shit, like guys mm. who have fought in Iraq. Or Whoa. a guy who like followed a uh, warring, um, like an African militia on like a crazy mission, like nice. through the jungle or some shit, right? Or a guy who dived into a crazy underwater cave and mm. tried to recover mm. a body, like just any kind of story imaginable. And they'll have these people on the show, and and um, it's yeah, it's crazy as you can imagine. But they those all sound like stuff. very intense thrilling action pack type stories is that kind of the theme of the show like <laughs> um actually those are the ones that stuck hardest in my okay, memory okay. Yeah, yeah but they have a whole variety mm. of of vibes and mm. intensity levels some of right. them are very <laughs> casual actually but yeah. just very funny mm. um they're all true stories um but yeah they vary wildly yeah it's it's really f- fun to listen to also um i listen to like news podcasts mm-hmm. like on point radio Love that. They that cover means. a lot of current topics. Yeah. I mean, just like any sort of major political topic or science topic, environmental topic, they're really up to date. I also check out Pop Culture Happy Hour. It's like a, another NPR podcast. And it's just like, if you want to know about the latest books, the latest music, the latest uh, like film trends or whatever, it seems kind of mainstream, but it actually is a very fun and in-depth analysis of all the new stuff that comes out. Cool. And it's a good way to get up to date on on stuff especially if you're living in china and you don't know what the hell is going on yeah <laughs> yeah yeah uh, that's kind of a good segue into like <laughs> what i wanted to really bring up with you today like yeah. um you've been living in asia <laughs> yeah yeah man which is incredible and you've got like a whole new life for yourself over there and you've been mm. um like teaching english and mm-hmm. you've been doing like you've been performing doing so like Mm-hmm. Dude, I'm I've been dying to actually hear about this because last time I saw you, we basically just hopped in the booth, recorded some music, but I didn't really we didn't get a chance to chill and like yeah, pick your brain. So like, yeah, what's up? What's new? Um, what I'm doing now is I've I've been teaching English in Shanghai, China, for almost six years, and over the past like three years almost, I got into stand up comedy out there through some people that I met. 
I uh, got really into that. Uh, now I'm doing shows all the time there, open mics also like weekly showcases and now getting shows in cities around China, like not exactly touring, but mm. like hopping out every now and then to do like a quick show in, in Chengdu or over in uh, Guangzhou or Suzhou. These are all just little towns okay. well, compared to Shanghai. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but also like since I moved there, I was doing music for a while too. I, I found a really good live music scene. There's a lot of like jazz musicians and funk musicians out there and like, like DJs, um, musicians of all different types. And they had collaborated and created this uh, weekly jam session that they called the foundation. Well, before that it was called the movement. And that was also a big part of my life there for a while. I was doing hip hop with those guys like all the time for a couple of years out there. It was all Wait. just a lot of fun though, like doing mm -hmm. like weekly jams, open mics, everyone's welcome to come out. Yeah. I wasn't recording and putting stuff out. It was mostly just like jamming, but like we would do like shows with people coming out for it and shit. So that was, yeah, that was a big part of it. Are these other like yeah. people, these are other English speaking people or are you jamming with Chinese jazz and hip hop <laughs> yeah, artists? Good, like good. what's the mix like here of backgrounds yeah. and yeah that's a good question yeah because um when i tell people about stuff i'm doing in china they're like oh is it with all chinese people right because <laughs> right? yeah. actually yeah there's there, there's a huge expat population in shanghai definitely so it's funny because actually when you're living there you're living in china but you can have a life there where you're hanging out with mostly like british people or american people oh, or crazy. french people mm. or like polish people and uh, yes, uh, a lot of Chinese people come out too. Yeah. But uh, proportionately, yeah. not as many as you'd yeah. think right, <laughs> living right. living in Shanghai. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it would be mostly English speaking people or people who speak English as a second language from somewhere in Europe or around the world. Um, but yeah, a lot of Chinese people would come out too. And like, uh, yeah, like a few of the guys um, in the band, like bass players, drummers. Were, were Chinese and really good, really, really good. Cool. But like we uh, we couldn't communicate as as well because my Chinese intermediate at best and a lot of yeah. people there from there who speak English also about, you know, intermediate, so. So it's a bunch but, of both sides just kind of trying their best and yeah. meeting somewhere in the middle. Like <laughs> Yeah, man, yeah. And it's great because, you know, music, uh, it bridges that gap, yeah, right? Like even if you don't understand each other, you still have fun together. It's and, a language, uh, really. Yeah, man, and uh, brings everybody happiness. You know, mm -hmm. you have a great time together, and it's, it's less awkward. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So w when you when you first moved there six years ago, what was that like? Was that challenging, adapting? Like, did you have to learn Cantonese and Mandarin right away, or w mm. were you able to get by? Like you said, because there are so many other English speaking people there. Yeah. Um, when I first got there, I didn't know like a word of Chinese uh, and over there in Shanghai, they speak Mandarin. Um, so I didn't know a word of Mandarin, okay. um, but I'd been told uh, beforehand from a reputable source that you could get by out there without knowing sure. any, any Chinese. And that's true. You can actually, you can get food, uh, you can get a taxi, you can get any sort of basic service that you need without knowing any Mandarin, but it's going to be really awkward, really undignified. You're going to feel like such a tool. Um, but I mean, if you want to, you can live there for years, just using sign language and, you know, like pointing wow. at stuff. And that's what a lot of foreigners do there. Yeah. And, uh, but it really makes you shake your head. Like if you're there for like a, over a year, even you should definitely try to pick up some, some Mandarin. And so I did, I started studying on my own, uh, using online uh, apps for learning Chinese characters, right. learning how to read and type in, in pinyin, which is when you use the alphabet to spell Chinese words. Um, and from there, I improved my vocabulary enough to start actually like speaking. And yeah, now I'm at like an intermediate level. And so oh. I'm, I'm pretty proud, you know, like, cause it's not easy. <laughs> yeah, man, I've heard, I mean, I've heard how difficult it is. I've quite a few, you know, um, Chinese friends, at work and you know they'll be like oh say something in french and i'll be like oh it's this and then i'll be like say something in mandarin and there's like seven different ways of saying something with a little mm. bit of a different intonation on it yeah. and if you say it wrong it's very <laughs> offensive and if you say it with a little bit of this intonation then it means this it's like it's so particular and precise and just yeah just okay. seems way more complex i got a pretty like, good example of that actually okay um 
So yeah, in Mandarin, there are four different tones. Uh, the same exact word pronounced with a different tone is a completely different word. Yeah. Um, so you can accidentally say all kinds of shit. <laughs> I'm sure. Right? Yeah. And like all kinds of shit. And yeah. I hadn't really um, learned about all of these different ones, but I'd stumbled into one. <clears throat> I was in a taxi and I was getting out. And um, when you pay for stuff in China, you use your phone. You have apps on your phone to just like swipe or scan. And so I wanted to ask this guy if I should scan him when I get out. Okay. So scan is sao, and then like you is ni, and then ma is like question. So like scan you, sao ni ma. But uh, the phrase for fuck your mother <laughs> is <laughs> Tao ni ma. Oh shit, with a little T at the front of the... <laughs> Which yeah. sounds almost the fucking same. Oh my God. <laughs> You're yeah. not... I mean, I was asking it awkwardly. I mm -hmm. think you should say it differently to ask, do I scan you? But that was all I could think of. I was just like, Tao ni ma. And this guy fucking looked at me for a second <laughs> and was like, oh, he's holding his phone up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Whoa. I think he saw how funny I thought it was though. <laughs> I was like, no, you, no, I just didn't mean to say that. <laughs> I'm sure they're used to that. Like, yeah. With foreigners, like making mistakes like that and the fact that you had your phone out and you weren't like didn't have a threatening body language i'm sure he got it he got the message pretty quickly like, yeah you're right like they don't take foreigners that seriously when yeah, they're when yeah. they're speaking chinese like because <laughs> yeah. like i think they're used to people saying the dumbest shit like because yeah. i mean you will try to say something and and just fuck it up so many times wow and so I think, yeah, they're really used to it. Sometimes I find they don't even like listen to you. Yeah. Like I'll be trying, and I'll, I will know for sure that I said this correctly, but they'll just be like, huh? Cause like they don't even think I'm speaking Chinese. Like I'm just, but yeah. yeah I don't hey know. bro, I'm trying my best over here. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, like at the same time, people who are giving you the time of day to listen to you and hear you trying to speak Chinese and say anything correctly in, in Mandarin, they give you so much credit. Mm. So it's a, it's a really mm. supportive environment. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. Really supportive, especially after going from Montreal to, to that part of the world because. Oh it, yeah. Where it's very different. Right? Yeah. <laughs> in Montreal, like everybody expects you to know French. Yeah. Um, but when I would make my feeble attempts at speaking mm. French correctly, people would get exasperated really quickly and they would just be like, uh, you know, switch into English mm. Um, and you know, they, I, I'm sure they appreciated when I spoke some French, but they wouldn't really give you much props. And they would also just kind of, you know, just, just take it as like a normal thing. Whereas in, in, in China, if you say anything correctly, you get so much feedback, positive feedback right away. They're like, Oh, Nishora, how about, you know, like you speak so great and they <laughs> freak cool. out. That's really cool. Yeah. And so, uh. It's a good environment for a person like me who gets discouraged really easily yeah. when uh, learning a language. Wow, dude. So you're really immersed in language because you're trying your best to learn <coughs> this new one. But then at the same time, you're also teaching locals how to speak English. Mm -hmm. So what's that been like? And where are you doing that? Is this at a school or like a private, one of those little like community colleges or? Mm, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a high school a private school, uh, a boarding school, a boarding school. Okay. Yeah. And, um, when you think of a boarding school, you think of, you know, a really exclusive kind of, um, almost snobby, right. Kind of higher class yeah. environment. Um, and it is kind of like that there because the, the families do need to have money to put these school, these, their students in these schools. Right. But, um, there are so many schools like this, they're not like super fancy. Like, so the students do live at the school, okay. um, but they're living in these like kind of cramped dorms and these like big dorm buildings, you know, just so many people packed in. Right. And so um, it's pretty rugged what these kids do actually. Like they live in a pretty confined space with a lot of restrictions on their day-to-day -day freedoms. Mm. And, um, and they're young, you know, they're like, 15, 16, I mean, they're high school students, yep. you know, it's that age where you don't want to take shit from anyone. Oh yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. they are, they're dealing with a lot of shit. So I really, I feel for these kids, but they are, uh, they're just like kids here though, you know, like, um, behavior wise. I mean, you have kids who are amazing, mm -hmm. do great work, don't have problems focusing. They have great personalities. They, they take their work seriously, 
Um, they do what you ask them to do and with a good attitude. And you have kids who are just like, fuck this, you know, yeah. they just want to sleep all day or they just don't want to play basketball all day. Yeah. I understand, you know, like I can't tell these kids what to, what to want to do. Yeah. But it reminded me so much of being back in high school myself. Yeah. Um, I would say generally the one main difference is that uh, you, you don't have as much, I think, uh, aggression in, in students there. I don't see as much fighting hmm. as I used to see when I was in high school. And of course you don't see my, the kids do not get away with doing drugs. <laughs> There's the, I know that when I was in high school, I saw all kinds of stuff like that going on. Uh, I don't think any of these kids could get anywhere near a, a drug or a drop of alcohol mm. while they're at our school. Um, I mean, yeah, that's, that's just the I guess that overview. in itself probably keeps them a lot more tame and manageable, maybe, if they're not like, you know, I mean, hopefully you're not 14 and hungover, but right. <laughs> you know, like, but it happens, you see it. You right? see it. Yeah. Or, you know, like we, in high school, we would like, we'd be doing chew at, in the parking lot in between classes <laughs> and like come back with a fucking massive head rush and like, you <laughs> yeah. know, just dumb shit, right? So yeah. I mean, it sounds like there's a lot less of that there. So yeah, you're right. Cause they just are denied that. They're denied that. the access to any of it. Like, so. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, <laughs> Lord knows how much dumbness would be happening yeah, yeah. If, uh, <laughs> if they were allowed to just run free yeah. during lunchtime yeah. um oh yeah, yeah. And that and respect the, is all, quite different all the all the weed we would we you know some of jesus at lunch and stuff so yeah oh i remember that too <sighs> it was bad i don't i can't i just i mean there were a lot of kids that didn't for sure but mm -hmm. the ones that did i just don't know how we got anything done <laughs> like, i don't yeah, know man. how we go through high school <laughs> i mean i was definitely in my weed smoking phase when i was uh in like you know grade 10 and, and up mm -hmm. and but i like quickly figured out that i could not smoke weed at school man because like when i would show up in class like i was just like lit up you know yeah. like it was impossible to not notice that i was high yeah. and i would just be so ineffective i'm not doing anything right yeah. like i'm just holding my book upside yeah. down you know yeah, like yeah, the yeah. dumbest shit and i would just start sweating because i think everyone's looking at yeah. me like who's fucking hell dude already <laughs> struggling with math and this <laughs> this is not helping <laughs> worse oh man so yeah. um you've got classes there like are you you're like the, what do they call you there? The, the, the master, the instructor, or the... Oh yeah, I'm just, uh, my title at that school is subject teacher. So subject I would just teacher. be assigned to teach a particular subject and I would mm -hmm. have maybe two subjects with multiple classes uh, taking those subjects. So I was teaching grade 10 students English mm -hmm. um, and I was also teaching grade 12 students English. And so that's, that's what I was teaching this mm -hmm. last year. When I started, I was teaching um, English for a UK track. So like I was preparing students for standardized tests. Oh, okay. Those tests that you have to pass if you want to be a student in the UK. And also I was teaching some history class uh, that was um, based on a curriculum prepared by my colleague. Amazing uh, world history, like ancient history nice. curriculum. Super mm. fun to teach. Uh, but my students didn't give a shit. <laughs> they were so tuned out. But I had fun learning this stuff and teaching it. Yeah. Yeah. History can be boring as it is. But when you're teaching someone history about someone else's, like you're teaching history, these kids are learning history about someone else's history, right? Yeah. Like, they're Chinese, yeah. but they're learning about like Portuguese explorers or like North American civil wars. It's like, yeah. bro, like this does yeah. not apply to me. And like, <laughs> You can tell that kids at this age haven't all taken the time to learn the history, even of their own country, right? That's like, what I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't at that age. Like, no. I knew a bit. Yeah. But, yeah, so it's, and I think it is a little bit ahead of their development, I think, yeah. I mean, this would have been a great, like, first-year university course, I felt like, because I was having a blast. I was like, this is so cool. Mm -hmm. Ancient Mesopotamia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, yeah, they're like, we don't care. Um but yeah, so from doing that job, I uh, I learned a lot of tricks. Mm -hmm. I learned you know how to be a better teacher over the past few years, and now I'm starting a new job uh, this fall where I'm going to be doing basically the same job but at a different school, um, different hours. I think better pay. I think, and I'm pretty excited for it because I think it's going to give me more freedom 
to to do my hobbies outside of yeah. teaching. Yeah. yeah, that's a good. That, that that's something I wanted to ask you too. Like, um, because you know, obviously in North America, our teachers get spring break off, they get summer vacation off, they get a big mm-hmm. chunk at Christmas and stuff like that. So is that mm-hmm. is that kind of similar over there where you get big chunks of free time to go and travel or do your own thing like in between. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, uh, I think we're spoiled. (laughs) We get a lot of time off over there. Like, and a lot of it is paid time off too. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, you get Chinese holidays and Western holidays because you know, they're like, these guys are from North America. They're not going to tolerate, you know, not having a break during Christmas or something like that. Wow. Because you know, no one cares about Christmas there. Yeah. But um Yeah, at my old <laughs> at my old job we got Christmas. Yeah. At my new job actually we're not gonna get Christmas. Mm. But you do get um Chinese national holiday. That's like a week off in October. Sick. Um you also get Chinese New Year and the school winter break. I'm not sure what the origin of the winter break is, whatever, but that makes like a month, a month off in February, and then you get all <laughs> summer off. In the middle of summer, like nice. you get like a, yeah. a quarter of the year off. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. ridiculous. Um, and I don't know, you can go traveling. I didn't travel much. I, I'm so lame. Like I have so many opportunities to go traveling yeah. and I just don't cause yeah. I just like chill mm-hmm. and just, I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna hang out with my friends here and, yeah. and I don't know, like, like drink and hang out and catch up or whatever, maybe do some, some shows or something like that. Um, but I have done a bit of traveling around Asia like other countries or just more of China? Mostly? I, I went to Thailand. I went to Cambodia. I uh, went to Japan. Um, I checked out Hong Kong, of course. Where else did I go? I haven't been to Vietnam or Laos or anything like that. Um, yeah, that, those are the main places. That India is out. right next door too, right? Yeah, you know, I haven't checked out India, but I've been like, I've been scared to check out India, man. Because every time I hear from anyone who's been there, it's like everyone who goes there gets food poisoning, like Mm. invariably. And everyone tells me that, you know, it's just, uh, it's just so overrun with people and not yet quite at the level of modernity to like really keep things completely, I don't know. I don't want to say like safe. I'm sure it's not dangerous to go there, but it just sounds like the, the level of humanity that's there would be overwhelming to someone like me who doesn't like that many I see. Uh, disorganized Yeah, crowds. it'd probably be like a literal culture shock. You know, it'd yeah. be hard to get used to. Um, yeah. I'm sure like, you know, maybe you're staying at the Four Seasons in, <laughs> in what do they call it nowadays? Mumbai or what's the capital? Uh, um, that's uh, probably okay. <laughs> yeah. But you know, you're going to rural parts of, Mm, or yeah. they're drinking out of the rivers yeah. and there's yeah because i don't, don't want to go to like a big city and stay in like a fancy hotel i want to go to like a hostel yeah you want to get in you know, you know immersed in the in the culture yeah right? and yeah. check out a village or something yeah. like that that would be so much cooler um but also i just feel like i'm not like a very resilient traveler like i get like i get freaked out <laughs> i get like uncomfortable uh but yeah i mean i lived in i've lived in china for a while which yeah. is you know no piece of cake either. Yeah. So I'm sure I could make it in India. I'm probably just being whiny. <laughs> I mean, cause just China gets ridiculous too. It gets absolutely like in the summertime in Shanghai, mm-hmm. I swear it's like the worst environment imaginable. That's why I'm so happy to yeah, have a job where I can leave every summer. It is hot, smelly, crowded, noisy. It's raining all the time. The sun never comes out in summer because it's just monsoon season. Oh, and so it's, it's like fucking muggy. hot. Oh yeah, just like humid. Just, yeah, and oh, it's fucking just, hot. Yeah. And you're in the city. You know, like yeah. it's not even pretty. It's just yeah. like fucking concrete, <laughs> fucking gas fumes from bikes and cars and shit. And you're too hot. Oh, oh my god, it is. You basically leave your apartment <laughs> and you already want to have a shower. Like. Be- Oh Before yeah! You walk down the sidewalk. You yeah, just, man, oh, you're showering. Like, you're showering like three times a day, at least. Oh, it's yeah. it is awful. Yeah, so I, I probably wouldn't be able to manage to that for here. very long. <laughs> yeah, it is not comfortable, man. Um, but it's uh, it's also pretty exciting. The day to day stuff. Yeah. Does the does your your Canadian? I guess not. You don't. You're getting paid in because you're living there. You're getting paid in what are they? What's it called uh, there? UN or U- R- RMB. RMB. That's yeah. their currency. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But like, 
let's say for example like your savings or whatever you have of money in canada to like how does that transfer well there like oh it- yeah that's a yeah that's a good question um this is uh, a problem that's been like troubling every expat who lives and works there yeah. is how to get your money out of china mm. and they have deliberately made the process challenging in order to <laughs> in order to transfer your money out of the country yeah. you need to get all of this paperwork like um. lots of different kinds of documents and you need to show up there. You need to have all of your identification. Oh, yeah. You need to have documentation about where you live and your like employment contract. And uh, you know, it's a bit overwhelming, but they do this to make sure that people can't easily just send money out of the country. They really are not interested in like, getting any money taken out of their, their I country see, or their economy. And um, but it is, it's doable. Yeah. yeah. It's just a pain in the ass. Yeah. I mean, when I came back this summer, I just packed a, a stack of Chinese bills and just threw it in my backpack. And I was like, I'm just going to exchange this and, and put it in my bank. But yeah, if you really want to like move serious money out of the country, mm-hmm. it's going to be a, a bit of a challenge. Yeah. Cause they got a whole different government structure than we do. Right. It's just, um, it's, is it not communist? Um, dic- uh, well, cause okay. They have, I don't know much about their, uh, politics obviously but it's right uh, not as liberal is that a safe way of saying it is yeah as, uh, yeah is what we've got here like uh, i hear people describe their government as um authoritarian that, and, that i think that's the word i was looking yeah, for yeah and, and autocratic mm. um and yeah that's that's totally how they roll i mean like they they just like they're, they're so frustrating to deal with yeah. i mean the, the 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 regulators there yeah they will just snap their fingers and make something happen. Mm. You know what I mean? Like they, I've heard people complain in the past that, you know, one day out of nowhere, they just decided that all cheese is banned. Uh, <laughs> like, Jeez. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, I mean, it was more specific than that. It was like all soft cheese imports are banned hmm. because they thought that brie cheese, for example, uh, could contain bacteria or some kind of unsafe component, right? Mm. And I'm not even sure if this was verified or not, but they just snapped their fingers one day. Yeah. They're like, okay, no more. Yeah, New and law. everybody's flipping out because <laughs> yeah. there's so many French and Italian and, and you know, like uh, European people living in China. Right. We're like, what the fuck? Why can't we do business with, with this cheese anymore? And the oh. Chinese government will just be like, because, because we said so. Wow. Like that's the kind of shit that they do over there. Um, and I mean, you probably heard about this in the news that um, during the Beijing Olympics years ago, they were, taking huge wrecking crews and just knocking down houses to prepare, you know, for new renovations for, for the games. Oh damn. And the people who lived in these properties, like they were just notified with a stamp on their wall or something. Yeah. Your house is coming down kind of shit. What? And they would just be like, I mean, they would compensate these people. They'd be like, okay, here is your uh, document that will ensure you a property of equal value or something like that off in this neighborhood. Okay. Get out of here. Okay. But that's, that's how it worked. Right. Like that's, that's what autocratic. Sure. Authoritarian government is, is that they just, you know, they make decisions and no one can (laughs) uh, influence their decisions. Sure. uh, Entirely top down. Wow. Um, yeah. So, um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, so that kind of stuff can just come out of nowhere and fuck everything up for, for different people yeah, living and working there. Yeah. I mean, like one day you could be doing great and the next day, maybe the business you're in has now been, uh, illegalized or something, right? Like maybe you're now not allowed to sell your products anymore and then everything is fucked. <laughs> Wow, so, but I mean, certain uh, certain jobs are safer, you know, like like teaching English. <laughs> That's yeah, definitely... they want that, right? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you guys get they, they give you a lot of um, you know you're revered quite highly. Like like you were saying, they're they're making sure that you get the things that you were used to in North America still while you're living there. Like they mm-hmm. they, they want to make sure you guys. Uh, you know, are taken care of and that you're not going anywhere anytime soon. They want to, it sounds like they want to keep you around and, and they, they, they appreciate what you're doing, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. They got to feel well. good. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. You feel actually, yeah, that, that brings up another point. Um, when you're an expat working uh, in schools or working in, I mean, a lot of other industries, um, generally for being a foreigner, especially, I hate to say this, especially being a white foreigner mm-hmm. in China, uh, you get treated like kind of a rock star and people are always trying to make you comfortable, always trying to treat you really well. 
Uh, you see a lot of inequality in the workplace. Like I saw Chinese people who I was working with doing way more work than I was being asked to do sure. and getting paid way less. What? And, oh yeah. And not complaining about it at all because I mean, that's just the way things are there. But, um, and yeah, that, that makes a lot of expats really soft when you, when you go and live there for a while and you get used to that. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why people who live there, um, you know, end up in a, they have a problem because they don't want to live in China anymore, but they've gotten used to being treated like a rock star for so long that yeah. they don't know how to move back to the West wow. where they're just a regular person. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And you get soft and then you start thinking, oh, I can't leave or yeah. Sometimes I worry if that's happening to me or not, you know mm. what I mean? But um, <laughs> that is something to be aware of and it Damn, happens dude. over there. Yeah. because I never would imagine that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, it's like that though. And, um, oh man, you meet some of the fucking shittiest white people there too, man. Like, <laughs> oh my God, dude, I fucking hate so many of the people I meet there. Cause they yeah. know about this lifestyle shit. Right. And they kind of, they take advantage of it a bit. You think? Absolutely. They yeah. do. Oh. And you see, when you, you recognize that someone is doing it, it's just like, oh. fuck you, man. Like, oh. cause yeah. like, you know, these guys like ain't got shit back home. You mm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, and like, I understand like if you're not successful or whatever, but like, you know, don't go be a piece of shit in another country. Just take advantage of people's, you know, generosity and, shit. and like take advantage of a situation just because you're yeah white or whatever. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> it gets it gets creepy too. Like dudes go over there to creep on Chinese girls and shit right. because like locals when they see a foreigner behaving in a certain way that may look creepy to me and you, yeah. they just, you know, are so unfamiliar with the culture or the way that we act. Oh, they right. just think, Oh, this is just the way that they act. Or, you know, this is just their way of greeting people or interacting with other people. Hmm. So like dudes can get away with the creepiest behavior over there oh, without getting called out for it. You know what I mean? Wow. And so it can be rampant in some places and it's, it's fucked That's up. That's a little disturbing. It is disturbing. A hundred percent, man. Dude, like, makes me fucking sick, dude, yeah. when I see that shit. But like, Ooh. you don't see it so much in, in places like Shanghai because it's more of a, it's more developed. People are mm -hmm. more aware. And there's so many foreigners there that people really know what's up. Yeah. But like, if you go to like, you know, smaller cities yeah. or like even villages, not, you wouldn't see it that much. But like you'll you'll find creeps in places like that. Wow. Yeah, dude. Predators. Yeah, fucking losers. Just loser. For, yeah, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> um, but I've I've never actually huh. lived in like smaller cities. I've just lived in Shanghai the whole time. Right. Because that's that's what I want to do. And I was yeah. like, I want I want the big city. Yeah. I want like the the biggest and best place. <laughs> and so that's I've been there the whole time. So what's um. um What's Chinese beer like? Because I heard that <laughs> they're the number one consumers of beer in the world. Oh yeah. Okay. That's funny. Cause like, um, it's just like, you know, cause they have so many people, right. they can, <laughs> yeah. they can, they can consume so much. Yeah. But as far as like being like beer aficionados, um, there's not really a developed beer industry there. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's only like one major beer brewing company in, in China called Qingdao. Okay. Um, and beer there, interesting fact is all, uh, pretty much light beer. So okay. like if you go to a store and pick up a Budweiser, it's not going to be the Budweiser that we get here, mm. which is like, well, like five and a half percent or yeah, something. I think it's so. going to be like 3.9%. Uh. Like, and like, they just do that to all the beer. So like you, you're always drinking light beer, but they just, I think recently started putting out beers that are, you know, what we would call normal beers or whatever. Yeah. But like, like a nice was, 6% IPA or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so everybody just drinks Qingdao okay. over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, and that's, I guess, probably by numbers, one of the biggest beer brands in the world. But like, right. we don't drink right. it here because like, it's not exactly like real beer, but. But you, yeah. so you can get imported stuff though from other places. Like you can get Heineken there. And but like you said, but you've seen Budweiser. Uh... Yeah, you're right. I forgot to mention Heineken is another brand that's like on every shelf. Mm. A few brands, foreign brands really yeah. got into the market. Yeah. And like, yeah, you can find them everywhere. Like Budweiser, Heineken, I mean, uh, Asahi, which is in Japan, which is right next door. Yeah. Uh, what else? Yeah. Those, those are the main big ones. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a big part of their culture? Like if you're going to go out with some friends after work or, uh, you know, go to a restaurant, like are people, what's the main alcohol that they're drinking there? Um, when you go to these like social events, um, you know, like a dinner where you're entertaining business, 
partners or stuff like that. Um, it, it's a really popular part of doing business there to go to dinner together with people who you're doing business with. Okay. And so like at that occasion or at like a, a family dinner or whatever, the drink of choice is this stuff called by Joe. Um, and it's, uh, I forget what it's made with. I, I haven't really done my research, but it's a clear alcohol. Okay. Right. And it's very, very powerful. It's like almost 50% or over 50% alcohol. Oh, whoa. I so think, like think more than vodka and rum and shit. Like yeah. Which is 40, it's like, uh, I mean, how much percent is moonshine? Like, oh, like 80. 80, okay. 80 up, up there. Right, I mean, so it's, if, yeah. it's not that high, but, but like <laughs> yeah. it, it feels like something you've never drank before. You oh, know, okay. like when you compare it to a, a regular liquor or whatever. Sure. Um, and I've, I've heard that you can get it here, like in Chinatown. Um, I've never looked for it myself. Mm. I only discovered it when I went there. It's a traditional Chinese alcohol. Um, and it is, uh, it's the grossest thing I've ever drank in my life. <laughs> I've got to tell you, I've yeah. tried it before. Yeah. It's like a first year in China kind of thing. You know, okay. everybody, when they first arrive is like, Oh, what's by Joe? Let's yeah. try that. Yeah, and yeah, right. they try it and they never drink it again. Cause it fucks you up. <laughs> so nasty. Like it makes you stink. Like you take a sip of it yeah. and it's coming off your breath and your skin for like an hour afterwards. Oh no. It, it can like sweat out of your pores <laughs> and it tastes unbelievable. I don't even know what to compare it to. Wow. It, it is so fucking foul. <laughs> if you, but you know what, if you get, actually, if you get like, um, fine brand by like the higher quality stuff, maybe is a bit smoother. Maybe it is, a bit smoother. <laughs> but the stuff that most people drink, you yeah. know, the stuff that most people can afford to drink yeah. is fucking toxic. Do you find that a little <laughs> weird that during like a, a, a supposedly productive meeting or when you're going out with like clients or whatever, like th they're drinking like hard liquor, like which yeah. is supposed to, supposed to get you fucked up. And yeah, um, I and mean, and it totally <laughs> is a thing. Like you go and you get like nice and lit with these people <laughs> who you want to make a deal with. Huh. And it's like, it's considered very, uh, um, that's, it's like the right way to do business. Yeah. It's like, it's rude to not do that with someone who you intend to make a deal with. Okay. Um, although I'm not out there doing business a lot, right. Yeah. I'm just, I'm working for a school. Yeah. I mean, I have a boss. I mean, I just do my job. So I don't, I don't go to stuff like that yeah. all that yeah, much. Yeah. Although we do have company dinners, but those are different. You're not encouraged to get fucked up with those. <laughs> so luckily I haven't been in that world. And cause I mean, that would, I think that'd be gross. <laughs> yeah. And you wouldn't want to get like, I don't know, too banged up in a foreign country, you know, maybe if you've been there for six years now, so you know mm. your way around, but in the beginning, you know, um, it could be dangerous. Get, yeah. get lost in a big city. Yeah. Drinking too much moonshine. Or, yeah, or, man. You don't want to <laughs> end up with alcohol poisoning blacked out on the ground yeah somewhere like that yeah um yeah I'm, I'm trying to think if i've heard of anyone having like big trouble like that i mean some people i think the worst case of that i've heard about is one girl who i used to hang out with there uh got blackout drunk and fell asleep in a taxi um and the taxi driver decided to take her to the police station. That was probably a good because, call. <laughs> right. Cause he yeah. thought this person is, you know, messed up on something. Yeah. And I don't, don't want to deal with her. But then like <laughs> when the police like went to grab her out of the vehicle, uh, she woke up and thought she was being attacked mm. and she struck one of the police officers. Oh, good. And Perfect. well, but, but for, yeah, for doing that in China, <laughs> yeah, right? you get fucking trouble. Ooh. So they threw her in jail oh. for like three months. And then kicked her out of the country. Yeah. And the fucking, I mean, you know, it must've been horrible for this person. That's a bad experience. Yeah. So, I mean, that, yeah. that happens, but that happens out there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you stay out of trouble. Stay out of trouble. <laughs> stay out of trouble. Yeah. The police are not as forgiving as, you know, our, our guys on quads at Kitts Beach, for example. Are, yeah. You know, if they see you with a beer, they just say, what? Hey, put that in a plastic cup instead. Yeah. <laughs> and then they go off. Well, you on know, what's their way. funny is like, <laughs> Yeah, out here, the police, um, yeah, you're not going to get like a heavy sentence for, for doing some dumb shit. Mm. Um, but f police will be uh, physical, you know, like they'll they'll grab you, they'll restrain yep. you. Sometimes yep. they'll taser you or slap you up. Like you see that all, all the time, right? Pepper sprayed. But, yeah, yeah, right? But in, in China, actually, cops don't ever do shit. Like you see no action out there. Like I've really? never seen a cop <laughs> tackle someone. I've never seen a cop like grab someone and choke them out, 
tie them up or throw them in a vehicle by force. Huh. I've never, ever seen that. It's because the, the police, I don't know why, they just tell people what to do and people cooperate because they're scared right. of getting in trouble. Right. Um, wow. Like, especially if you're a foreigner, right? Like yeah. no white person like who's a foreigner in China is going to resist arrest. They're not testing. Right. No, like no, no. you would have to be fucking insane. Yeah. And so I've never seen that. And so like, they will just calmly take you with them and be like, okay, get in the jail cell and then be like, by the way, yeah, you're here for three months or some shit. And wow. like, yeah, it's so low key, but also very stern. Right. Um. Yeah. You. Yeah. Well, it's probably not as extreme. I mean, it makes me think about like, stuff we see and hear about North Korea, right? Where people are mm. just so afraid and brainwashed that they're just, co they're going to cooperate, right? For the most part, like mm. they're just, they're going to be obedient. They're not stepping one foot out of line. They're going to just, um, you know, they know the rules and they're not going to try and stand above the rest. They're not going to try and be individuals. They're not going to try and, you know, we have this big problem in North America with, with everybody wants to be special. Everybody wants to be, mm a star everybody wants to be famous everyone you know mm. and as a result we get we have to have you know very aggressive police because people are such proud individuals over here you know <laughs> what i mean but yeah some people think that they're uh above the law or, or yeah that's or it. whatever like <laughs> and so cops will you know cops around here are jacked you know and they'll yeah. they'll handcuff you they'll tackle you you know um, the, yeah. get physical. Um, because, and you're right. That is that is not such a common thing in China. Is people yeah. thinking that they are invincible mm. and running around and doing crazy mm -hmm. shit? I don't know why. Everybody seems to have. Um, they're more grounded. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, that's what I've heard too about Japan too. Um, everybody just kind of they, they they it's for the greater cause as opposed to just standing out and being special. It's just like it's for the. Be part of the bigger. Be part of the bigger picture. Be part of the bigger cause. Part of mm. the. Yes, absolutely. Um, I've I've read about this a little bit. Yeah, they call it Western individualism mm -hmm. versus Eastern collectivism. Sure. Right. Which mm -hmm. is yeah, like the mentality that yeah that prevails in especially in Japan. Yeah, and also in China. Um, right. It, it's about the society, the the yeah. group of us, not about yeah. you going out on your own and yeah. being a special person, even though we all contribute. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I find that interesting. That's uh, fascinating, though, that cops can literally just like with words get you into the back of the car. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. I yeah, I swear I've never seen a cop crazy. put hands on yeah, anybody. Yeah. yeah. Um, fascinating. <laughs> so weird, man. Uh, it's yeah, it's so weird. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll tell you like what's going on recently though. Um, they've been tightening regulation on all kinds of stuff over there, mm -hmm. especially on um, drugs. Of course, drugs are illegal in China, right? But what they've been doing recently to like really get the crackdown on is they've been raiding bars and raiding nightclubs. Hmm. Like they'll wait until peak hours and then they'll roll up with a few cars and they'll go in the front door. They'll lock the doors and they'll be like, okay, everybody. Everyone inside is trapped then yeah, basically? You are all not leaving here oh until God. you pee into this cup. Uh, and when we take this, we're going to test your that's urine right intense, here. Bro. And if you clear the test, then you can leave. Like, that's the kind of shit that they're doing. And they're catching people. Like, they're throwing a lot of people uh, in jail for, I don't know, a few days or maybe mm. longer. Maybe kicking them out of the country. Whoa. Maybe letting them off for, like, a, some kind of deal where it's like, hey, you give us the name of your dealer or some shit. Yeah, right. Um, and you so, rat someone out and we'll let you go. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. And so it's got a lot of people nervous. Um, that, that's really been happening yeah. recently. I've never been in a, a location that was raided like that, thankfully, but it's been happening in locations all around my, my neighborhood. And so I'm like, this is, this is crazy. Yeah. Do you see or hear about a lot of drugs? Um, I used to, it used to be actually when I first moved there, it used to be pretty open. Mm. Like you could get away with a lot of stuff. Mm. This, this crackdown stuff really just began like a few years ago. Um, and I mean, yeah, like Shanghai was just like any world city. Like you could get your hands on all kinds of different stuff. I'm sure you can. If yeah. you just go to the right neighborhood, yeah. look for the right person or whatever. I mean, if that's what you're into, yeah. you know, it was out there. Uh, but now it's like people are, very uh very sketched out to go in toward any kind of stuff like that people don't talk about it 
you don't see guys like, you know, trying to hit you up on the street about it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you don't see as many people doing, doing, doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's, that, there's more of that, like overarching government influence, just kind of scaring the masses into cooperating again, like mm-hmm. without brute force, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, brute, obviously locking the doors and trapping everyone <coughs> inside is brute force, even if they're not touching them, but yeah. it's, it's, it's the idea, right. And it's the tact, these tactics that they're using where they're just, preventing people from doing it just by scaring and, and yeah wow i mean it's funny because like you know if that ever happened here in canada right it would be a total uproar oh God. i mean that is yeah. a massive violation <laughs> of your you know everyday rights and freedoms yeah, yeah. right but <laughs> at the same time these cops yeah they didn't put a finger on anybody they didn't grab anyone mm-hmm. and put them in a headlock i'm not saying that makes it a better approach yeah i'm just saying they have a totally different approach yeah um, and as much as it sucks, I fucking hate it. Uh, it's working. It's like, right? wow. It sounds like, it. I mean, I'm not saying that that justifies it at all, but it's just so weird to see like totalitarianism working. You know, it's like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Fuck man. Yeah. So when are you getting a chance to do the comedy, the stand up uh, stuff and how's that going? Yeah, man. Um, so since I started in Shanghai, things have been getting better and better, man. It's really yeah. cool. Like, um, I got put on showcases after like a, a short time because out there they have a lot of people who are coming to shows and frankly, not a lot of people who are doing comedy and sticking to it and getting mm-hmm. better at it. People right. are just kind of messing around over there. It's a very amateur scene, um, but it's developed a lot. And, um, I got into it when it was developing a lot more. And so I got like, I was very lucky because I got a lot of opportunities that you wouldn't get so early on mm. starting comedy. So I got to do a lot of stage time and stuff. Sweet. And so, um, and so, yeah, I've, I've had the chance to do shows opening for like touring, uh, pro comics. Oh, really? Uh, not like huge names. Mm-hmm. I haven't opened for Bill Burr or any shit like that, <laughs> but I've, yeah. I've got some good opening spots, yeah. a few little credits. Um, and so, um, from doing a lot of shows in, in, um, in Shanghai, I got the chance to, you know, get some good videos to to use to promote myself. So from there, I I hit up a bunch of guys in Vancouver before I came back this summer. Um, And I actually got some responses from a few bookers for for showcases. Okay. So just last night, I did my first uh, comedy showcase set in Canada. Last night was my first one. No way. Uh, Congrats, man. That's really cool. Oh yeah. And you know what? It was a blast. It was really cool. We were at, um, yuck yucks on Canby and I'd never been to like a, a weeknight comedy showcase here. Mm-hmm. It was a Tuesday night. I was like, Oh, okay. I guess this is going to yeah. be like 20, 30 yeah. people. Yeah. Dude, it was like a hundred people. Nice. They packed that room and, um, and the host did a great job. They put me on first. I love going first cause I hate waiting all night to mm. go on. Yes. And, um, <laughs> And this was like, this was a big deal for me because I have been doing a lot of these jokes for a while in Shanghai in front of expats who speak English, Yeah, but you know, it's not Canada, it's not North America. Yeah. And I don't really know if it's going to connect sure. here. Yeah. Right. And so I've been doing open mics here, trying my material, but open mics are kind of awkward. Not everyone's into it. You know, yeah. you don't get the best environment for, for doing stand up every time. So this was like my first time to do like a real show with a real audience at a real club and try my shit out. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it went well. And I was like, I was so happy, you know, I was like, okay, it does work. Yeah. I can keep yeah. doing this. <laughs> this material okay. is going to translate to people in North America. Yeah. Um, Cause it was such a big question mark for me the whole time. Yeah. I was like, am I even funny to anyone here? <laughs> like, yeah. is anyone going to give a shit? Yeah. I don't fucking know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so I did it last night and it was like, oh, okay. I don't completely suck. You know, this is great. And I get to do it again tonight. Yeah. Same spot. Yes. Yuck, yuck. Same spot. Yeah. Um, cause the people who got back to me were like two different bookers who book Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I just asked for like, you know, consecutive nights so that mm-hmm. I could do this and then be able to like, you know, go over to Galliano for mm. like the week yeah. next week instead. Yeah. Um, what yeah, time, so. what time are you going on tonight? Uh, tonight I'm going on at, uh, well, the show starts at 8 PM. Okay. Uh, people got to go there around like seven 30 to get seats. It seems is how it goes there. And uh, I'm not sure where I am on the list, actually. I haven't seen the list yet. But um, they usually put like six comics on, and uh, we each do 10 minutes. Okay. 
Yeah. So I am psyched. I'm going to do the same set I did last night. I mean, yeah, yeah. but it's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, and a couple, a bunch of my friends are going to be there. Jake's going to be there. Um, cause that's right by my crib. It's so oh, yeah. f- yuck, 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 yucks is right down the street from me on Canby, <laughs> but I already have plans tonight. So I'm yeah. going to see if I can, if, if I can come before or after, depending yeah. on when you go, but damn, yeah. Yeah. damn dude, anyhow, like <laughs> all good, good man. I mean, wishing you the best of luck. That's I'm, I'm stoked that, that that's working out for you. So thanks man. And I mean like, um, you know, I'm still very early on in like a quote unquote comedy career, mm-hmm. but that for me, what felt like a, a significant step. And I was, yeah, so I'm really stoked. Yeah, to, exactly. To do it in front of your people, quote unquote. Like, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, this is where I'm from. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, <laughs> and it really gave me, you know, the 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 drive and the, and the feeling of purpose to keep doing it. And yeah. I was like, shit, yes, I can't wait to get up tomorrow and, you know, try to write some new material and oh, go dope. to some open mics mm-hmm. and just, yeah, man, um, I'm, uh, I'm motivated and inspired right now. I'm, I'm really happy today. <laughs> what kind of things are giving you writing material? Like what kind of topics and what kind of things are you getting inspiration from to do your, your bits or. Yeah. Your- um, when I started in, in Shanghai, that's another kind of um, advantage that you have starting in China is that being a foreigner in China is so ridiculous. It's, it's so funny in itself. Cause mm-hmm. you know, you're struggling to understand the language mm-hmm. you're getting lost all the time you're ordering yeah. the wrong food yeah. you don't know how to find toilet paper you know, like yeah. dumb shit like yeah. that <laughs> and so it, it's really easy to start being a comic there because you can just comment on that and expats they connect with it right away because like right. oh my god that's my life too holy mm-hmm. shit so that's how i got started there yes um and then i started actually trying to do like you know real material that you could tell anywhere <laughs> right yeah. not just yeah not just there um and so I like to do a lot of like one-liner jokes or just short form that have like a short setup and then a, and then a punch. And I also do, well, like, okay, where do I get my ideas from? I've been trying to focus on myself recently, mm-hmm. just really do stuff that lets people get to know me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so one of my favorite bits that I've been doing recently is about my, my fingertip. You know about this, right? How I lost my, the end of my, but I forgot finger. about that, but I do remember that yeah. now that you show it to me. <laughs> right. And so I was like, okay, I really want to do something about this because it's so cool when you can, uh, you know, give a crowd something to listen to and laugh at, but at the same time, let them get to know you uh-huh. and like get, get to enjoy something that's different about you. Something that makes you unique. Mm-hmm. Uh, this makes me a little unique. <laughs> so <laughs> actually, yeah, I, I did, I did a bit about this. Um, but a lot of my jokes are just random, really random observations about all kinds of shit. Okay. Um, like there is no overlying or theme running through yeah. any of my jokes. Yeah. I talk, touch on all different topics. I mean, I have a joke about like booking hostels online. I have a joke about, uh, like cigarette packs and how they should change the information on the front. Like <sighs> jokes about like my favorite food. I mean, uh-huh. I just all, all over the place. Too. Okay. Yeah. There is no theme. There's no message at yeah, all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Behind my <Yeah>. shit. <laughs> Zero message. Uh, you're not going to learn shit, but, uh, uh, you might have fun. Um, and yeah, man, I, but recently everything that I've been trying to write recently, I've been trying to uh, dig into myself. I think that that really is, Uh, the best thing that you can do as a comic, I think ever is to really give people, you know, the authenticity of making funny jokes about, you know, your truth. I don't mean like your, your position on stuff. What I mean is like, you know, your past, your history, why are you who you are? And, and yeah, and and show a little bit of vulnerability and talk about your, your, like you said, your story. Yeah. Like be be, be human a little bit. Yeah, absolutely, man. I think that that is so essential is to be as vulnerable as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To not be afraid to talk about anything, especially by yourself. Yeah, man. And so I've been trying to dig into that stuff. And, um, it's funny how many topics have come into my head that are things that I never thought about talking about before. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, things that I wanted to not talk about, maybe things that made me uncomfortable, stuff like that. And I'm like, wait, why does that make me uncomfortable? That could be kind of funny, actually. Yeah, if I talk yeah. about it, I right? See. Yeah, and so yeah, now like I'm just I'm, I'm chipping into those things now, and I'm starting to think like, oh, okay, this this could be fun. I haven't written any jokes about a lot of these things, but um, I am definitely going to. 
<laughs> Dope. Do you do you yeah. find like watching, um, I don't know, like s- other stand ups, like when you know people's specials are on Netflix, or you can watch old Robin Williams on YouTube and stuff. Like, do you ever do that to like study some of the greats and like see how they're watch their timing and watch how the people are responding to them? Like, yeah, man, I um I love watching uh yeah classic clips of the greats. I'm not that well studied actually like there are a lot of guys who are considered legends who i don't know shit about Mm. um i'm very much a beginner in like understanding the full canon that's out there but i do have um some some big big favorites i mean like mitch hedberg right like how are you gonna not like his stuff he's my favorite and he's one of my one of my biggest inspirations i mean i'm not saying that i can do what he does Mm -hmm. i don't think i ever will but i look to him Sometimes when I want to get really uh, amped up and excited okay, about, about yeah. writing stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, recent guys, guys who are active now, there's this guy called uh, Nate Bargatze. Um, I had never heard of him until I accidentally saw a clip of him on YouTube or something. Yeah. Um, I just fucking love this guy. He's squeaky clean. I didn't even realize it until someone pointed it out. He's a totally clean comic, doesn't go into any like nasty, dirty sexual perverted or like you know major swearing tirades or anything like that oh yeah he's just fucking funny and he's uh he's extremely likable yeah um i don't know man he's he's great you should check him out sometime um like jim gaffigan's like that right oh where, hell yeah where yes. it's like you could bring the kids to watch jim gaffigan he's making jokes about you know f- fucking pop tarts and yeah or no hot Horses. pockets and <laughs> you know just like family stuff things around like observations about his kids and stuff it's just like yeah to me, I don't know, you know, I've never done stand-up comedy, obviously. I watch quite a bit of it, but in a way, I feel like d- doing the squeaky clean stuff is almost harder, maybe, because, mm. I don't know, you have, you can't just say anything. Mm-hmm. You're actually, like, working within a parameter a little bit. Mm. You know, it's a, it's it's one thing to just throw, like, a fuck or a shit in, bet- in one of your sentences, but mm. the types of topics that you can pick are... There's less of them, right? Yeah, I completely, I completely agree, man. I think most people would agree that, that yeah, that um, to be clean is way more challenging, right? Like you said, there's so much you can't say. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I like, think I, it's like, like, I like his shit. He's funny. And so that is, yeah, I find that like really impressive. Mm-hmm. If someone is super clean and still killing it and just coming up with original material all the time, I mean, how do you do that? Without yeah. talking about porn, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Without, without talking about gross shit, yeah. <laughs> How do you do it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> yeah. Do you get a lot of time to like just chill and write? And what is that process like when you're writing material? Is it, is it are you writing with a pen and, and paper or? thinking of stuff on the bus and then writing little ideas on your phone or like, yeah. Um, I've been trying to like, you know, be a disciplined, you know, regular routine writer kind of, you know what I mean? Like I've been trying to sit down, get my laptop out and Mm. and type ideas down and stuff regularly. Um, but yeah, I've not ever figured out a way to ensure that I accomplish anything when I sit down to write. It's just okay. like when I was writing rhymes, you know, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, cause I would sit down sometimes to like write like a verse or whatever. I would not think of anything that I liked. I would just mm-hmm. be like, this is whack. This is whack. This mm-hmm. is whack. And then like, maybe I, something would hit me or whatever. I feel the same way when I'm, when I'm writing jokes. What I do like is, um, I often have ideas when I'm hanging out of like a premise, right? Something that I think is interesting. I want okay. to talk about something that I care about something that's funny to me. I'll be like, okay, sick. I'll sit down. I'll write about this. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'll just do that, like, writing exercise where, you know, you sit down, you write, you don't stop writing. Don't think about what you're writing. Uh, don't analyze what you're writing. Just write everything down that comes into your mind about this topic. Um, get it all out and then try to come back to it later and sort it out. Okay. And so that, yeah, that's what I've been doing. Because, <clears throat> I mean, I've I read a little bit about you know, the best way to, to get the creative stuff rolling and yeah. I found that writing wise, that's, that's the best way. It doesn't always work though. More mm-hmm. often than not, especially recently, I've been writing shit down, coming back later and be like, this fucking sucks. <laughs> like, I'm not, I don't even want to look at this anymore. Mm. So like I go through a lot of like ups and downs with like writing productivity. Um, I mean, sometimes I'll feel like I haven't written a good joke in months, mm. you know, like, cause I've tried so many jokes and they all suck. 
<laughs> it's just like, I think that's just the part of the job though. It's rough. Yeah. Like, you'll just, you'll be like, man, all this shit sucks, but Hey, just got to keep trying. It's like anything like you've got to, you've got to put the hours in and then refine it and edit it and work on it. Like you can't just expect the first draft of anything to be the final, you know, hopefully, I mean, you're right. I've, I've always I had a problem with that. I've yeah. always been trying to write final drafts. When, yeah. Like mm -hmm. even when I was in university writing essays, I wouldn't write a first and a final draft. I would just be like, this is my draft. Yeah. Like, this, <laughs> yeah. The night before it's due, this is my draft. <laughs> yeah. And so I've always been doing shit like that. Yeah. And I get, and so you get frustrated, right? Yeah. When it's not good enough. Mm -hmm. like, why would it be good enough? <laughs> no, like it shouldn't be. It's like, it's like trying to recipe and you've got like five things and you just put them in a bowl and then try and make something that tastes good the first time out of those things. Yeah. It's like, that's a miracle if you can get it the first time. Like if you yeah. think about it that way, whereas if you go and, you know, try 10, 12 times, like, you know, like I think about when I, when I'm doing a mix, you know, for example, when I'm not on a, when I'm not on a timeline to get something finished for an artist, when I'm mixing my own stuff, I go through months and months of revisions and it's just, it's ridiculous. Right. And I just go yeah. over and over and try it again, try it again, listen to it, try it on this set of speakers, see how it sounds. Oh no, I got to go back and change this. And it's, it's, it gets better every single time, right? Like every right. time I go back to it, it's, it's improving. Right. Um, but then the big, the big, clincher there is like when you are working on uh, a timeline to have something finished at what point do you just say i'm done with it you know like i have to submit it i'm even gonna have to just say it's done now my got my sets next week mm. you know these jokes i may not feel 100 percent about them but i'm just gonna have to say you know what this is the best i could do right yeah no i completely agree um, and it's crazy how every creative pursuit is like that you know what i mean yeah i think so like I mean, I haven't really thought about every, you know, piece of creativity out there, but I think like when I do like, like painting, yeah, or music or stand up, you could, you could never stop working on something yeah. right, if you wanted to. Yeah. And yeah. you could just, <laughs> and yeah, I feel that way about, about jokes a lot too. Um, Cause you'll go to an open mic and feel like such a tool doing the same joke again, but it's like, Hey, I changed it a little bit. I need to like do it again <laughs> Yeah, because it's almost, you know, it's almost done or I need to do this again a few more times. But yeah, it's exactly like you said, you keep working on it over, over months. And okay. The worst part about that for me though, is when you do decide that it's done, you're fucking over it. <laughs> oh yes. So it's like, okay, it's done. I don't want to look at this ever again. Ever again. But then it's like, wait, now I have to <laughs> tell this joke like <laughs> every time. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's just part of the job, isn't it? <laughs> it's well, you know, you, you, all the big comics talk about before they do their special the one that gets filmed you know they've done that set like a thousand times right mm. and they go and you know rogan and those guys talk about doing like three four sets a night you know wow um and it's it's just repetition and repetition and you might be improving like the timing on this one punchline or like how you set this thing up but it's just like by the time they film that special that goes on Netflix and it goes on all the big platforms. They've done that a thousand times and they're just so, they must be so done with it. Like, wow. And then they never want to <laughs> look at it again. Everyone else can enjoy it, but I'm done. I don't want to wow. see it. Like, yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, fuck. I haven't even thought about how much prep it would take for me to do like an hour special. Cause like right now the most I've ever done is like 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And that for me was like, you know, insane. And I mean, and yeah, cause I, I do when I'm preparing for a longer set, repeat my stuff over and over yeah. and over because I want to, you know, have it absolutely dialed so sure. that I could do it like drunk yep. or high or in my sleep, <laughs> yeah. but like to be ready to do an hour special, the amount of repetition yeah, and tweaking, crazy. it's crazy. That, oh my God. It's yeah. overwhelming. It's a lot I of talking, I'm, you I'm know, fucking lose my mind. <laughs> I would lose my voice too. <laughs> like talk to a two two person conversation for an hour is a lot but when it's just you there on the stage oh there's no one answering you it's just you delivering words yeah <laughs> like like a really powerful lecture yeah right like yeah. and you're like man i, I see why they're sweating always yeah. and doing that shit a lot um of pressure fucking crazy dude yeah that, that's amazing um 
What was the last like comedy special that you watched? Oh, uh, it was Chris D'Elia, oh. which he actually filmed um, in Vancouver. Whoa. It okay. was at <laughs> the Vogue. Oh, sick. It's on the one of the ones on Granville Street. Wait, were you there? Uh, no, okay. no. But uh, I didn't even know that he had filmed it there. And then I, wa I watched it on Netflix and I was like, you know how they'll like do the, you know, how like a, a stand up special. They'll sometimes follow the comedian around, film them getting out of the car, walking mm. backstage. And then like, it all depends on how they direct it and edit it. Right. But it's not, it doesn't usually just start with like them on stage. There's a little bit of like an intro. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Hey, wait a minute. Like that looks a lot like fucking Vancouver. And then I found out sure enough, he was, cool. he did it right downtown. Like he's one of the big, biggest guys out right now. And he yeah. chose to do it in Vancouver of all places. That's fucking like, crazy. I didn't know that dude. I mean, yeah. uh, so yeah, he filmed his Netflix special. His in Netflix, Vancouver. his special in Vancouver. Wow! When he could dude. all the amazing legendary clubs they have in LA and stuff. Nope. Yeah, I mean he's Vancouver. from fucking LA, yeah. isn't he? Like that's that is fucking um, crazy, dude. But it was so good. Like he's he cracks me up. He's hysterical. Like yeah. Um, and I, what I one of the things I love about him most is he loves his shit as much as you do like he cracks himself up yeah. and when he laughs it's just it makes you laugh too like yeah. you, you can just tell he's just thoroughly <laughs> enjoying what he's doing dude yeah i love that shit dude um not bored dude. with it at all he's just up there just <laughs> having a time fun. of his life having so much fun oh that's sick no i haven't seen that yeah. what's the special called oh shoot uh i don't remember yeah oh, he, good. I'll his just last one was called man on fire and then that was either this one or the one before it, but I can't. I I can't recall off the top of my head. Or I just um, look it up. It'll be easy. But to check find it out. It was yeah, shot in Vancouver. Amazing. Just like just an hour of just pure comedy genius. <laughs> um, Sick. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was the last special I checked out? Oh, you heard of this guy called Chad Daniels? No. I just found out about him recently. Didn't know about him. Apparently, he's had a long and successful career. He's great. He put out an album called uh, Dad Channels. It's all about his role as a father. Okay. Uh, it's really funny. It's on yeah. Spotify. Okay. You just throw it on, uh, listen to Dope. it. So yeah, that, that was a really good one. Yeah. Loved that shit. Is just that just audio it. only on Spotify then? Um, yes. Yeah. I haven't checked to see if there's a video available there, but um, yeah, you can, you can listen to it on Spotify, okay. the whole thing. Yeah. And if people want to look at stuff that you've done, is there a wave or are any of your sets, have they been filmed? Is anything on YouTube that if people want to. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Some of that? Um, my online presence is pretty minimal right now, but yeah. I'll tell you what I do have. Um, I've got, there are a few roast battle videos of me up on YouTube. Oh, and sweet. there's also a short clip of me doing like a bit for like three minutes. I also put up like a whole 10 minute set of me, but I actually made that video private so I could okay. just send it to bookers. Okay, okay. Try to get, try to get yeah. put on. Um, yeah. My plan is to do kind of like an Andrew Schultz thing. I don't know if you've heard of this guy, but Sounds familiar. Yeah. He, he cracked into the, to the comedy game basically by uh, recording a special and then releasing it for free online, like in, in short clips, like he would put it in parts on YouTube. Okay. But now he also has like a lot of um, short clips on Instagram, um, you know, like ha have like closed captions on them and stuff like that. Yeah. And just through those, those short like snaps basically. Yeah. Little teasers. Yeah. Built a huge following that way. Um, so yeah, I don't have any sets online, but um, you can look up Shanghai Rose Battles on YouTube. Okay. Uh, I won the Shanghai Rose Battle tournament. What? Yeah, dude. I got a trophy and shit. <laughs> I mean, it was, you know, like, like Shanghai is an amateur comedy scene. It's not okay. super developed. Yeah. So the roast battles weren't all like, you know, really crazy, mm -hmm. but a lot of them were really good. And, um, I had a really fun time and every show was really, really fun. And, um, yeah, yeah, man. Uh, I, I took it in, uh, in, in June. It was sick right before I came out back here for the nice. summer. Um, that kind of that kind of ties in a little bit with like, your background in hip hop though, doesn't it? Like roasting is all about like ba rap battling, you mm -hmm. know, and being able to come up with stuff off the top of your head and being witty and, and creative. So I could see how you'd be good at that. Um, mm, yeah. I, I've definitely have <laughs> burned people before, yeah. you know, from doing these rap mm -hmm. battles in the past, man. Absolutely. And so I felt like, yeah, I did have maybe a slight competitive advantage, 
because a lot of these people who I was competing with, you know, have not done a rap battle yeah. and have yeah. not, you know, roasted people mm -hmm. at that level before. Um, and so I definitely felt that that background, yeah, definitely helped me compete. Um, there were some fucking good guys though in this, in this, uh, tournament. Yeah. And, uh, the guy who I battled in the final, he was fucking destroying me, dude. Really? He was killing me. <laughs> I have never been so embarrassed, like oh, in a roast battle, like he was fucking destroying me. People were laughing their ass mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like he just stumbled like his last few jokes, um, just didn't connect. I'm not sure what happened. Hmm. They just, they just didn't work for him. Right. Um, whereas I stayed consistent through the whole battle. Um, and that's so, what won the judges over, I guess. Yeah. yeah. That's what yeah. won. But like, yeah. I mean, he was fucking me up like in the first half of that. Oh yeah. my God. It was, I can't wait to see the footage. I mean, um, the guys who, who put it on over there, um, they're still getting their shit together kind of. So, I mean, the footage isn't even being released at a regular pace. They haven't even released the footage of the final yet, but, um, I'm going to hit those guys up and be like, Hey, what's, what's going on with that? Yeah. Cause <laughs> after the show, I'm sure a lot of people are going to want to check that out. Mm -hmm. Me, like me included. I'm, I'm going to want to see the Shanghai roast battles. Yeah. Yeah. You can check that out. That is fun to watch. Okay. Some of the battles are fucking so dumb. Some of them are really <laughs> fucking good. Uh, but Hey, everybody had fun. That's yeah. for sure. Um, also, yeah, I'm starting to use Instagram more. I mean, yeah, okay. So in China, Facebook is blocked. YouTube is blocked. That's right. Yeah. Instagram is blocked. Damn. Google is blocked. Um, Google. Yeah. Yeah. Just cause Google, I think wouldn't uh, comply with China's, uh, search filter requirements or something like, you know, if okay. you, yeah. Anyway. So they have search engines. You can look up like a, you know, a, baked potato recipe or something like <laughs> if you yeah. want like <laughs> yes you can look up practical stuff yeah sure but you can't look up certain political topics wow. and certain mm. historical events historical uh, events even. like like uh you know t square 1989 uh in beijing tiananmen square that okay kind of if you okay. google that sure. you know they're gonna be like block yeah wow. i mean well i mean you don't use google at all there but wow. um so you can get a vpn yeah. which is uh you know a proxy network to help you use blocked sites so i do use that out there but because of the inconvenience stops a lot of people there from using certain social media platforms as frequently as you wow, would over yeah, here yeah. so as a result i mean i never have been a very like avid social media person myself but my instagram game is fucking whack like <laughs> since i've been back here i've been like shit someone needs to teach me how to use this mm -hmm. like what is a story yeah and like like legit what is a fucking story now i'm just starting to like um really focus on turning instagram into a platform for my comedy so yeah. um yeah my handle is eric alex stand up okay follow me on instagram perfect um and i'm gonna actually start getting active up there i got a few things up just like you know posts from shows and stuff um but yeah man yeah that's what's up okay well everybody go <laughs> follow uh eric alex stand up yeah and, um we're gonna youtube the <laughs> shanghai roast battles as well um that's right when we release this show i'll i'll get a link and we'll put that in the description so that people can um find it easier yeah yeah um but fuck should we wrap this up i think we're probably well over an hour here yeah it's just, it's i feel like i've lost by. all grasp on time <laughs> yeah. i feel like it could have been two yeah. hours yeah. it could have been 30 minutes i don't even I don't, yeah it's yeah. been a while yeah. <laughs> it's been at least an hour and well, i'm i need a drink of water my throat's fucked <laughs> me too i'm trying to look at that's one of tiktok's clocks there but it's a few oh. minutes behind but it looks like it's almost two o'clock so yeah we've done almost an hour and a half i think perfect um dude thank you so much for coming through this has been such a huge treat <laughs> Get to catch up with you over the podcast after yeah. all these years um thank you so much for having me man yeah and it's really good to catch up with you too yeah and uh on this platform like this and i'm yeah. stoked for all the the great things that you're doing you look great thanks um, <laughs> you taking, too you, taking care <laughs> of yourself you know killing it overseas so um yeah man all the best and uh, thanks to everyone for checking the show out this week. Hope you're having a fantastic weekend and we will talk to you soon. All right. Peace. Yeah. Peace.